production time night we came up with the uh, Persia classic which we feel was justice to the IP in itself. In the next few slides I'll uh, take you through the different uh, things that we, the good things that we did and some of the stupid blunders that we made along the way. Just giving you an overview, overview. The game was made on an engine uh, known as Coco Studio X. It's an open source engine and uh, basically this was free, this was available for free. We had a lot of engines within Ubisoft, but in order to convince HQ about uh, the level of depth and the uh, quality gameplay that we could come up with, we had to make prototypes on these engines, on this engine specifically. Uh, why we finally stuck with this engine was because uh, this was in C++ and uh, because our programmers were uh, already working on different consoles, Nintendo, Xbox, PS3, so they were well versed with C++. Moving to Objective-C was not required as such, so the engine was available. And plus it was open source, so we knew that at any point of time where we really needed to push the limit, push the bar, we could work on the engine. We could really, you know, modernize it and bring in all the things that we're missing out today. It was an eight-member team with uh, myself as uh, producer, one designer, we had uh, three programmers and three artists. And uh, we did it in eight months. We did lag a little again. So it doesn't happen only with Keras game, but it happens everywhere. So it's, it's a set. And uh, for the art, this was one very key essential point for us. We had the XBLD game, but then it was everything everything was in 3D and we were looking at making the game again in 2D and we basically had to do everything from scratch. And this was one major achievement that we really had the artist really put in a lot of effort and uh, we did a lot of research into the game, the IP, the environment, the portion style and everything. And at the end of the day we really had some cool looking outdoors and um, the character in itself was amazing to look at. So with animations, like I said in the retro style game was pretty much, you know, hardcore for game, you know, very despot, I mean, very real life with very few movements for the prince at that point of time. So we added in a lot of combo moves for the prince in keeping with the new generation. So casual players would like to see the game with fresh eyes. So, and for the devices supported, this was a major task, which we will discuss in detail later, uh, because of the high quality. So we managed at the end of the day to support all the devices starting from iPhone 3GS onwards, iPod 3G onwards and iPad on iPad. So about the builds, we just like uh, I think we did not go for universal builds. The main reason for this was because of the build size. Now, being, as the game was in 2D, there was absolutely no way that we could actually compress the build size and make it you know, like 20 MB or rather 50 MB because Apple has uh, increased the limit now. So, we, the best thing that we could do to still reduce the build size, although we are at 200 MB, was to have separate builds for both the iPhone as well as the iPad. Now, some, some stuff that we actually need, something that we really did there, something that we are pretty happy about, like I said, the art, it was, it was, as such a benchmark for our own studio, we did a pretty good job. The game in itself has got three different environments, it's got a dungeon environment, it's got a palace environment and it's got a high tower where the Jaffa resides. And the main technical challenge that we had over here was not make all the type, all the levels look the same. As we were making the game 2D, we were using tile editors and it's basically repeating all the tiles uh, for making a level. The problem in doing that is, if you repeat your time a little too much, all the levels look very similar in, uh, in its looks. And this was something that we really discussed a lot about the artist type of thing. And finally what uh, we did was, we had a separate layer for the shadows, the lighting and the different objects. And we use them as a separate texture and we apply them on the different types. So one type in itself would look a little different by applying a different kind of a shader or a, a, you know, a lighting uh, Texture on top of it. So finally, we were pretty happy. We made 14 different, drastically looking different levels with uh, four textures. Just to give you an idea, it's like a 2048 by 2048 file sheet. So we managed to fit in everything inside uh, that. Now, uh, moving on to the uh, design, I'll uh, let Chinmay then take 
because he actually gave us a clear picture. Yeah.